Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in this video, we make a battleship. We don't make the big one in the back, which is the USS Massachusetts. We make the 1 to 700 scale plastic model that you see in the foreground. It's the exact same uh, battleship. All right, let's take a look at a closer look at the model. The 1 to 700 scale was uh, quite a challenge for me. It took me about 12 hours to make this model, even though it's a small one, because there were just dozens, scores of um, tiny little parts like that right there, like that cap stand. See so yeah, it? Just comparison to the pencil. Oh, and, and some of the parts also on this model uh, move, which is nice. But um, all those little tiny parts made this kind of unique and, and uh, compared to some of the other models I made. That's the thing about this one. And it's about a foot in size. So let's take a look. I got the package. I ordered it from Amazon. And here's the a uh, little bit of an unboxing here. A lot of people do unboxing videos. I thought it might be fun to do an unboxing. So there you go. The USS Massachusetts. 1 to 700 scale. And uh, the manufacturer is Trumpeter. So there's the hull, all the various parts, and there's lots of them. Like I said, part um, B6 was that little tiny capstan, and there were a lot of them. They were all spotted all over the um, battleship. There's the instructions. Tells you exactly what to do step by step if you've never made a model. And there's even some de some uh, decals and flags and a um, some clear plastic parts. And there's one thing I did like about this um, kit, this trumpeter kit here, is it gave me a full color painting guide, which even gave you the number for different manufacturers for each colored paint if you wanted to order the exact right color from a particular manufacturer, like, um, you know, Vallejo or something. So, and see, so. Um, for a lot of the parts, what I ended up doing is I usually don't cut them off the sprue until I need them. But some of these parts, there were so many of them, I just thought it'd be a little easier for me if I cut them all off to make sub-assemblies and just collected them in little containers like that. But let's take a look at the tools that I used to do this. Um, you know, pliers, uh, tweezers, the two different types of glues, but for the most part, I use this extra thin cement, which is by Tamiya, is really, really good. And I really needed the extra thin. It made it much easier for all those tiny little parts. So let's begin. Um, you know, of course, I won't show you every single part. It would take forever. It would take, I guess, 12 hours. But um, I wanted to say a couple of things. Um, when you're removing parts from the sprue, if you've never built a model before, you usually should take a good look and make sure any of the little nubs that are left behind are either filed down or cut down because they may interfere with assembly. So you always be careful when you're taking parts off the sprue to you know clean up anything like that because it could either prohibit assembly or, or make the assembly a little tiny bit off. But that's part of you know the model making and, and that's standard for every plastic model that you make. So the first thing is, and this is a very straightforward build, even though it takes so long, it's because there's so many tiny parts, but um, you just glue the hull of the ship to the frame top portion of the frame like this, then it's nice and sturdy, and um, from there it's a matter of gluing all the various parts onto the top of the ship, and, and I'll show you a bunch of those now for, for fun. But I did like how um, accurate this this thing went together. So the sprues, there's a whole bunch of them, are numbered and lettered. And see, this is sprue number C. And the first part I did was um, part number 10. So this part would be called C10. And in the instructions, it tells you, hey, he takes part C10, gives you a picture, and it says glue it to whatever part, B12. You know, it's almost like you're playing... I hate to say it. It's almost like you're playing Battleship. That's too funny. So, B12 and C10. <laughs> wow. And, of course, I treated them to make them nice and smooth. Any the, where I cut. 
And that way everything assembled and glued together, uh, cemented together nicely. So that's a little sub-assembly. There were two of these. We just put these little pieces together. And then there's all the little guns that go on the ship. A lot of those guns. And those are part of a sub-assembly too, see? Each one is a sub-assembly. I'll show you a little bit. See, now here's a whole bunch of little sub-assemblies. It was, you know, just a lot of time just doing all of these. You put the two little pieces together, or sometimes three little pieces. And the crane, that was three or four pieces. And so I just um, built those all and set them aside until I had them all done. And now one thing I wanted to show you here. See, this this shows you all the sub-assemblies. But here, sometimes in the plastic bottle, you'll get the direction, the instruction to make a hole or to drill a hole. Um, that's because in the manufacturing process, they didn't put a hole in it or they couldn't put a hole in it because of the molding or something. So um, I have this nice little hand drill that I really like and it comes with extremely fine drill bits that this drill bit is large compared to some of the bits that are like thinner than a needle. But I really like this tool um, and it works really well on plastic. So I use that to, to drill the holes out where, 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 need, where we're needed in the model. But watch for that. You know, sometimes when you're making a plastic model, um, you think you glue everything, you, you cement everything together, but you actually you don't. Some parts you don't cement, and uh, the, the instructions will tell you. And some occasionally you may have to drill a hole, um, or a couple of holes, for parts to fit together exactly in the right spot, but there's no hole already there. So there you go, easy enough. Now that can be assembled right here. You can see those little, um, the big gun assemblies. You know, one of those I think was like 12 parts, see? So that's why this model, even though it's a small model, it's only about a foot in size, just a little under a foot. Um, at this scale of one to 700, it still takes a long time because there's a lot of tiny parts. So let's finally, let's start building out all the various features on the hull. And I'll show you this real quick. I'll just snap through a few different um, sections of it, but it's, it's kind of nice. And then there's another deck, an upper deck. See, and I love that thin cement. Um, I, I mentioned it earlier, but you know, if you build models regularly. I'm sure you have some, but if you don't, you build them once in a while, you should, and you don't have it, you should get some. It's really handy with the applicator brush. But let's put on some more parts and build it up so it starts to actually look like a battleship. And some of these, this one isn't, but some of these parts are sub-assemblies unto themselves. And now take a look at these guns here. You know, I really takes some um, focus to get those tiny little parts just right. So, so here we go and I'll flip through a bunch of the guns that those were sub-assemblies that I, I had made those all previously. So as far as the 100, 1 to 700 scale goes, the only reason why I did that is because that's the only scale that I could get this battleship in. Um, so I went with it, but I, I don't think I, oh, you know, I want to do too many of these at such a scale with such tiny little parts. I, I like the, the models to be a little bit bigger, you know, and to have uh, more of a detail in terms of, you know, you can see things a little bit better and it's a little easier to build. Um, one more thing that's common in plastic models, particularly, you know, military type, is these gun turrets um, actually rotate. Once it's done, you can rotate them freely. And you do this by, um, it's sort of like a little, uh, it's almost like a bolt and a, a, a nut and a bolt. So see, there's the, the bolt is on the, on that, on the gun. So underneath is, see how that sticks out? See it right there? You put the, you glue the cap onto it. 
so that it's glued to the bolt, but it, it, it isn't glued to the hull of the ship. So you've got a nice little mechanism there so you can rotate the gun. All three of the large guns do that. <clears throat> so that's about it. We'll finish up with the conning tower here and there's still more detail. You can see various holes where parts have to go in. But once I get all of that done, you finish the top and then um, you do the under the under the under the hull. And there's just some propeller work and, and that's about it. You know, I should paint the bottom of this hull to um, match the actual battleship, but I think I'll, I'll leave it red. It's kind of nice. You know, if you, um, I have a bunch of stuff on my website about plastic models. I, I do enjoy them very much, and um, I've made a bunch of them. If you make a plastic model, or a military type plastic model, um, send me a picture. I'll put it on my website and I'll send you a certificate of contribution. But if you want to learn more about how to make them and the tools and the process and the various different ones I have, I have a bunch of them now. I, I, I'm not sure how many I have. I have quite a few. Um, you know, you know, take a visit by my website. It doesn't cost you anything. Oh, and one final thing was the airplanes. and I, th These were interesting. I, I found it interesting that they were cast in clear plastic. I think that might be because of the um, resolution because those even the propellers were cast correctly on those little tiny airplanes so that's it thanks for watching